The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. We're super excited to have you all here today. We have some really great topics to dive into, and I just can't wait to, to get into all of the information we have to cover in this webinar today. Thank you all so much for joining, and I want you all to make sure that you're able to use the question box feature in the GoToWebinar app throughout this webinar today so that I'm able to see your questions and we can do a really great in-depth Q&A session at the end. So within the question box, I'll be able to see responses. If you all want to chat in where you're calling in from today, I love to start us off this way to just get a feel for where people are calling in from. You know, the beautiful thing about these webinars is that they bring folks to corners, you know, of the world, of America, of North America, of the whole, whole, whole world. So I would love to see where you all are calling in from today. For example, um, I'm in lo located in Boston, Massachusetts. So I love it here. I grew up here and I won't be leaving anytime soon. So you'll probably hear that again. If you attend any of our other webinars, I'll always be calling in from Boston. So I'll call out a few folks while we give folks a couple minutes to join here. And I see, you know, where you all are calling in from. We have Hannah from Charleston, South Carolina. Wonderful. Tanner from Riverview, Florida. Welcome. Samantha from Calgary, Canada. Welcome. Sherry from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Welcome. Mike from Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome. Jennifer from Boca Raton, Florida. LaRonda from St. Louis, Missouri. Wonderful. Welcome. Rick from Montana. Welcome. Karen from South Southwest Florida. Beautiful. We have Monica from Fairfax, Virginia. Wonderful. Krista joining from Pensacola, Florida. Lots of Florida folks today. James from Cleveland, Ohio, welcome. Alexander from Virginia, welcome. And so for folks asking for the chat feature, this is essentially your chat feature, right? I can see all of your responses here and that's what we'll use throughout the webinar. So I can see your questions, see where you're calling in from and see your thoughts throughout this. Thank you all so much for participating from that. I wish I could call out every one of you. We have folks from Texas, folks from Wisconsin, folks from California, Canada, from all corners of the world here. And that's really, like I said, the beautiful thing about these virtual webinars. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. I wanna warm everyone up with what we'll be discussing today in this hour long webinar. So we're going to go through a quick intro to just kind of understand, you know, what the topic is that we're going to be covering, how we gathered some of the data that we're going to be diving into, and what you can expect throughout the webinar. Then we're going to hear from our wonderful speaker, Kristen McCormick, today, um, where we're going to understand all the different key trends that um, we're going to see, and we'll do a data deep dive into some of those trends here from the data that we've been able to collect through um, our data and also through our partnership through with Microsoft. We'll also leave you all with some thought starters, some key takeaways that you can apply to right after this webinar into your own strategies. And then of course, we're going to jump into the Q&A. So that's why I'll have you all practice that Q&A question box exercise, because if you've attended any of our last webinars, we always have really great in-depth Q&A sessions. It's my favorite part. Uh, so definitely be sure to stay on and save your questions for that. And we'll bounce those off to Kristen. Great, so a couple of housekeeping items today. Logistically, I want you all to know that this webinar will be recorded, okay? So don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. Um, don't worry about that at all. You'll be able to find the web, uh, webinar recording very easily. It'll be in your inbox later today. Um, and you can also find this webinar recording easily on our YouTube channels, on the WordStream or Local IQ YouTube channels, where we also house all our past webinar recordings as well. Um, so like I mentioned, be sure to keep your eyes peeled in your inbox for the materials later. And as again, make sure that you enter in your questions for the Q&A at the end. So some of our, the folks on this call today might already be familiar with Local IQ. Maybe you're already even working with us, which is wonderful. Maybe you're totally new to us, or maybe you're also familiar working with our sister brands, WordStream and Reach Local. So for everyone on this call today, I want to get us on the same page as to who Local IQ is. So we're a fully integrated growth platform that combines innovative technology and unparalleled expertise to help any business out there thrive and prosper. And exactly how we help small businesses and businesses of all shapes and sizes thrive is really three main pillars, right? So we have technology at our core. Um, we have we powered through 
tons of AI and you know informed data from tons of different campaigns that you won't be able to find anywhere else. We also house all these tools that save you time in one easy place for all of you all so that you can put more time back into managing and growing your business while you have these tools at your fingertips to help make your marketing as easy as possible. And then of course we have proven performance and results that back our, our expertise. So we've been in the industry for over 15 years, which is pretty crazy to think about because if you think about the age of digital marketing, it's really not much older than that. So we've kind of been through it all throughout the years and have that data, that technology, and that expertise to really make sure that you're in a good space to grow. So a common question that I get asked a lot on these webinars is where can you find out more about us? Uh, where can you find out more about the topics that we cover in this webinars? Definitely check out our blogs on the local IQ and WordStream websites. Our blogs are easily found on there and we cover all the topics that we cover in these webinars, super in depth on there. Also be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and that's where you could get updates on future webinars. You can find out about other articles that we're posting, case studies, other news um, within our organization. Just so definitely check that out. So a couple of things about today. So one thing I want you all to keep in mind as we're going through some of this data, which is from our partners over at Microsoft, is we are from a premier partner with both Microsoft and Google. So those are the two major search marketing platforms. And it's kind of an elite or an exclusive group to be a part of, and we're honored to be a part of it. Um, so it's only granted to agencies like us that maximize campaigns, success for clients, you know, demonstrate clear platform knowledge and expertise. And we also have to meet some very rigorous requirements. So it's really something that we take pride in to be partners with these amazing um, brands. So just keep that in mind. And that's kind of how we have access to this amazing data and can tap into, tap into some of this knowledge. And with that, I want to bring us into our speakers for today. Um, one thing I will mention is we're excited to for you all to be here today. We're excited to be here. And I want you all to keep in mind that we worked really closely with Microsoft to put together some great insights and data for this webinar today. However, you might have seen that we were going to have an, uh, another speaker, Matt, who won't be able to join us today. But have no fear, we have a great lineup combining all the information from Microsoft and ways to keep your business growing. So just kind of keep that in mind. We worked super closely, but of course, in this webinar, we're talking about how to adapt and thrive, and we even had to do that today. Um, so for all of you on the line, it's wonderful to meet you. I'm going to be your moderator facilitator for today. My name is Susie. I'm a senior content marketing specialist over at Local IQ, where I write educational content about everything under the marketing sun. So that's a little bit about me, and I'll toss it over to our amazing speaker today, Kristen McCormick. Go ahead, Kristen. Hey, everybody. Um, can you hear me and see me? Yes, absolutely. OK, great. I had a, some last minute technical difficulties, so I'm a little um, scattered right now, but <laughs> I think I'm good. We're adapting and thriving, Kristen. We adapting are adapting and thriving. real time over here. Um, but yes, I'm the senior managing editor for Local IQ. Um, I spend a lot of time in content and most recently in a lot of data. And that's what we're going to be covering today. So without further ado, should we kick it off? Let's do it. All right. Um, and Susie, are you going to be controlling the screen? Yep, I have it up right now. So I'm in the about the data slide. OK, and when we get to the um, is there a part where I'm able to share my screen because I need to mm -hmm. like okay. All right, cool. Um, so as you know, this data is search advertising benchmark data, which includes average click through rate, cost per click, conversion rate and cost per lead. And that is across 23 different industries and 79,000 campaign cycles. Um, so our proprietary platform actually switches between uh, Google and Bing on like a per campaign basis. So it's not like, you know, there's not an exact measurement or breakdown, but search advertising is search advertising. Um, and this was the data that we collected throughout all of 2022 and we released it at the end of 2022. So this is essentially our most up-to-date data for 2023. Um, and the reason why we're sharing it is so you can stay competitive, plan your budget, 
and navigate the economy, which we know is very challenging right now. All right, next slide. So I'm going to start off with just like a very high level five minute kind of big picture overview here. And we're going to start with the picture. Um, so across all the industries that we looked at, um, the the averages include for click through rate, average click through rate, six point three percent. Cost per click, two dollars ninety six cents. Average conversion rate, seven point two six percent, and average cost per lead, just over forty dollars. And that's great, but what does that mean? So we go to the next slide. Um, the big picture here is that compared to last year, click-through rate has basically stayed the same. These, this is across for averaging all the industries. Cost per click is up a tiny bit. Conversion rate down and cost per lead is up. So, okay, that gives us some context, but what does that mean? You can go to the next slide. So now if we zoom out, we see that Compared to 2020 and 2021, the increase in cost per lead is pretty alarming. It, it decreased in 2020, it increased by 5% in 2021, and then we saw a 19% increase in 2022. Similarly, for conversion rate, there was barely an increase in 2020. We saw a decrease in 2021, and then we saw a much bigger decrease in 2022. Um, if you look, though, back at 2019, you see that the changes really aren't that far off from what we saw in 2019. And this is evidence that we are kind of returning back to pre-pandemic times. Um, so if you go to the next slide, uh, when I talked with Matt um, about this for Microsoft, he absolutely supported this. You know, this isn't really cause for concern. It's not like there's this exorbitant increase that we need to panic about. Um, this is evidence of a return to the old normal, if I could just say that phrase. Well, I didn't say new normal, so that's good. But um, one example he gave <clears throat> is that searches for dry cleaner near me in the beginning of 2022, they were up just 0.6% from Q4. And then in Q2, they were up 37% and then 80% and then 64%. And even though 64% is less than 80, that's still an increase from the 80%. So we are seeing a lot of changes here and we're seeing, as I'll get to in a little bit, some more, um, some rebound after some industries having, you know, pent up demand. So next slide. Um, so nevertheless, these are still big changes, right? So we still saw a big increase in cost per lead. And it isn't just because there's one industry that increased in cost per lead that's bringing up the average. We saw 91% of industries with an increase in cost per lead, 91 with an increase in conversion rate. And even though click-through rate stayed the same, Overall, we still saw an, an average, uh, most industries did increase and then cost per click similarly, but really conversion rate and cost per lead are the, the biggest things that stick out to us. So who's facing them the strongest? What's causing them? What can you do? That's why we are running this webinar. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so to make sense of this data, that's great that we have the averages in aggregate, but getting the the true insights here is, you know, for for your own understanding how you're performing, it's best to see like how you compare with your vertical and going into this data is going to help us to um, to understand what's the 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 patterns behind the trends. So absolutely. So I'll stop sharing my screen, correct, Kristen, because you want to go ahead and do a, a live viewing of it. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. And in the GoToWebinar panel, you should see a sharing option if you click down into that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. Um, sharing. And while Kristen figures that out, I know we just did kind of a high level look at this to give you all just a moment to kind of sync this, let this all sink in. I'd love for you to all to type into the chat. What are your initial thoughts so far? 
So while we allow Kristen to pull up her screen, I would love to hear from you all. You know, is there any data points that Kristen has discussed so far that surprised you or maybe didn't surprise you or you felt like you were seeing in your own account? Feel free to type that into the question box in the meantime, and I'll call some of those um, questions out. All right, I think I'm about to share, but I may, yep. We're gonna need to have you keep sharing, Susie, because my system preferences aren't allowing me to, but that's okay, we don't, we can um, adapt. <laughs> no problem, I can go into the web page for you if you'd like. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Pretty cool, yeah. So I see some of these responses coming in right now, and it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, how some of these are really shocking you. Uh, James here and Zach were both calling out click-through rate. I agree that the click-through rate was um, pretty interesting. Um, go ahead and keep those um, responses coming in here. I'm going to go ahead and share one more time. Yeah, are you able to take mm -hmm. over? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're gonna have to stop sharing your screen. Or here, I can go ahead and change it. Here we go. Great. Awesome. All right. Great. Okay. So these benchmarks are pretty in depth and pretty interactive. So we wanted you to all to see in real time um, some of the in depth data that you can get into after this webinar if you're curious. Yeah. So Kristen, tell me where to go. I want to I want to dig through all of this. So yeah. Where should so we start? If you can first just um, exit out of our pop up that's at the very top there. Yeah, just get that out of the way. All right, great. So we will return to the slides in a second, but I wanna just do a quick, um, I wanna do a quick overview of cost per lead. So Susie, if you click on just the um, average cost per, no, if you click on above the orange bars, just the, um, the word, yeah, and then click it one more time. So, if we look at the average cost per lead by industry here, we see this is not, um, this is just comparing industries and the typical patterns are the same. This is what we see every year. We see legal and attorneys usually have the highest cost per lead. Um, furniture is up there too. And then physicians and surgeons, automotive, those are down there. And this visualization is really helpful in understanding why industries have different um, kind of cost per lead profiles. So if you look at furniture, for example, um, if you, the furniture is number two, it's the second row down the list. And so it has a high cost per lead, but if you look over in the click-through rate section, it has a pretty low click-through rate. So if you have a low click-through rate, that makes sense, especially for furniture, because you're gonna be seeing if, if you're seeing ads for furniture, a lot of them are going to be visual on the search engine results page. So that kind of gives you an idea right away of whether or not you want the product. So you're going to probably have a lower click through rate there. On top of that, there's also also a low conversion rate. And that also makes sense because if you are, you know, if you are seeing an ad for a physician or a surgeon, the conversion action for a campaign will typically be to call or book an appointment. And most of the time you can cancel that appointment. So that's a very low friction conversion action. So you're gonna see a high conversion rate there. Whereas with furniture, it's more likely gonna be to buy that item. So we see a low click-through rate and a low cost per click, but a, a low conversion rate. And that's what leads to a high cost per lead. Attorneys and legal services, okay, it has a similar click-through rate profile. It has a high, pretty high conversion rate, relatively speaking, but the average cost per click is super high. And that's because those keywords tend to run really expensively. Um, and then if we look down at physicians and surgeons, that has a higher click through rate, low cost per click, but the conversion rate is super high, which is what translates to a low cost per lead. So this is really helpful. Um, just like uh, we will be sharing the link to the this page, but you can play around and sort them and filter them to see, you know, why certain industries have different profiles and what leads, um, how the metrics play off of one another. So based Great. on that, yeah, so based on that, I think at this point now, we can go back to the um, the slide deck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, so like I said, the highest and lowest costs per lead are pretty standard with what we've seen. Um, and you can go to the next slide. So the year over year change here, um, this is where we really see inflation doing its thing because we can see the largest and smallest indicator, the largest and smallest increases, um, arts and entertainment, travel, furniture, apparel. These are not the most essential items. So during the, we know that the economy is improving, but especially during 2022, there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of high prices, exorbitant prices. And so consumers are more conscious of their spending and they are, but, but at the same time, they are coming out of this pandemic and they're like, I still want to live my life. So they are still looking to spend, but they want to save. And so what you'll see in the next slide, I'm going to have you hop back in a second, Susie, but what you'll see in this slide here is that these industries, apparel, arts, travel, shopping, those had the highest or the, the biggest decreases in conversion rate. So they're more conscious of how they're spending. So click-through rate hasn't changed that much. So they're still kind of shopping around, but conversion rate is, is lower. So they're more conscious of their spending of essentials. So if you flip back, Susie, to the um, cost per lead, we see that correlation there. And on top of that, if you look down at the very bottom, finance and insurance, education and instruction, these are the only two industries that actually decreased in cost per lead year over year. So again, that just shows us that these more essential products and offerings are took priority because of the way the economy um, was shaping consumer behavior in 2022. So that being said, we can go to the next slide. Um, conversion rate. So this again is we just covered basically the year over year for conversion rate. And again, um, just looking at per, her, per industries, the highest and lowest conversion rates are consistent with years past. So for physicians and surgeons, automotive, a lot of times that is to call and, and book something. Um, dentists, dental services, these are all very low friction things. Call, get a quote. Whereas if you look down toward the bottom, uh, furniture, apparel, fashion, shopping, there's a lot of like higher commitment action. So that's why we see a little bit of a lower conversion rate there. So when I talked about this with Matt, um, they, he shared some data that supported this, this idea that inflation is the bigger drive, the biggest driver behind the increased cost per lead and, um, decreased conversion rate. And so we know that during times of economic uncertainty, financial services is the most widely used, utilized industry, makes sense. And in June of 2022, uh, Bing or yeah, Bing saw, Microsoft Bing, they, it saw a pretty big surge in searches for savings accounts, 165% year over year. And then also queries that included cash back, reward-based credit cards. Those also went through the roof during the summer of 2022. Um, at that time, and still now, but probably not as you know, as things are are leveling out, um, cost per click for these terms is low. Um, of course, as trends kind of even out, you're going to see increases. But this is definitely a time to take advantage of this increase in search term volume without the um, high increase in cost per click. So the other thing is that you do have to be aware of generational nuances. So yes, people are looking to save. And like I said earlier, people are like still coming out of the pandemic. So they're like, I want to travel and do things, but I want to save. So that's why we're seeing cheap discount. There's still interest. Um, so you want to cater to that. But he gave a great example of young people not really saving. Um, the, the graph on the bottom right shows that their personal savings rate is on the decline, and yet they have a really high interest in travel. So we'll get to this in a little bit, but it's really important to really pay attention to the nuances in your target audience and, and to the generations that you are um, catering to, especially knowing that Gen Z is really um, getting stronger and stronger. 
All right, so I'm actually going to, if we have time, I'll return to click through rate and cost per click, but these industry, these metrics didn't really change that significantly in relation to cost per lead and conversion rate. So we have this data, um, but I'm actually going to skip through and get to the part where we um, talk about thought starters and how to adapt and what this means for search advertising in 2023. Um, and Susie, remind me, we will stop at 1.50 Eastern time for Q&A. Yep, we love to leave a good solid 10 minutes at the end for the Q&A. And trust me, there are tons of questions coming in, so it's gonna be a great session. This is okay. great, everyone. Thank you. Great. All right, so what can you do about it? Like I said before, like it's not cause for concern or panic, but this is still a change. You're still seeing a really high increase in cost per lead, and we may not see it, you know, settle up. So the first thing is to focus on conversion rate optimization. Of course, this makes sense because conversion rate being down is the biggest driver behind this cost per lead going up. So what does that look like? Conversion rate optimization takes on so many forms. The biggest or the most uh, fundamental conversion rate optimization, I don't want to call it a strategy because it's really like an entire industry and practice in and of itself, but that would be landing page optimization. So make sure it's mobile optimized, make sure you've got a very clear headline with the description of the offer and make sure it matches the ad. Um, we have a number of resources and blog posts that can help you out with that. And even adding secondary offers to your landing page. So yes, for the most part, you want your landing page to be just to have this one offer, one call to action, um, so that you're not distracting users away with lower friction options or distract distractions like social media buttons. But there are times where you may see, um, you may get results from having just a slightly lower friction option within that landing page. Of course, it all comes down to testing. And of course, you wanna have a clean design, clear visuals, testimonials, all that jazz. And the biggest thing actually is a full funnel strategy. So most of the time, or a lot of advertisers want to, if they're gonna be paying to run ads on the search engine results page, especially for search ads, because we know that commercial intent is highest on search. Um, the inclination is to run bottom funnel offers like demos, trials, assessments, and purchases. But they're actually, especially knowing the way that consumers are behaving right now, like they want to spend, but they're not quite ready or they, they are not ready to spend as much, having a full funnel strategy is really important. So that means also promoting mid funnel and top of funnel offers. So yes, maybe you won't get a customer right away out of a guide download, um, and maybe it's not gonna be your highest value campaign, but it's not necessarily about what's highest value to you right now. It's about what's highest value to them at this point in their buyer journey. So you can actually get a lot out of capturing leads and bring them into your funnel with these lower funnel, these lower friction offers. And then you can nurture them through with things like email marketing um, and even retargeting ads. And this way you're retaining people from the top and you're funneling them into the bottom rather than just targeting people that are ready to buy right away. And that plays into this third bullet I have, which is catering to consumer attitudes. People don't want to stop spending right now. They want to save. So you can go to the next slide. So the second strategy is to focus on a cross channel strategy. So what I was just talking about is a full funnel strategy, and that was basically just within search advertising. So kind of promoting offers across your funnel, but you also wanna go cross channel where you are using multiple channels. So not just search, search is highly effective and it's highly competitive, um, but it's using that strategy alone is not going to cut it. There are plenty of other channels you can try out, plenty of other mediums, um, social display, OTT stands for over the top advertising. That's basically just a fancy way of like streaming 
ads on you know, Roku devices. Um, I want to say Haiku, but now it's Hulu. <laughs> I was mixing uh, Hulu and Roku. Um, and offline channels. So we are, you know, when I talked with Matt, there is just, there's so much speed and innovation. There, like even the the speed of innovation is accelerating, uh, especially for like search advertising and integrating these channels together. Um, and so that also includes offline. Um, there's this whole omni-channel trend going on. So you really wanna have multiple channels running at once and it's not just about, okay, I run search ads and I run social and I run display and I do like organic. It's, it's about getting these platforms to talk to one another and share data so that when a user downloads a piece of content from your Facebook ad, they get a, an offer or when they are on search later on, or maybe they're on LinkedIn, they get an offer that's different that's related to what they already downloaded or they get an email that says like hey you downloaded this we have another suggestion for you so you're catering to their journey so that it's a progressive journey and they're not just getting these random ads um, and on the right there is just some stats about 80 percent 87 percent of consumers want brands to provide more consistent experiences across channels there is a 287% higher conversion rate for brands that use three or more marketing channels. And it takes about seven in for the business before a person becomes a customer. So again, this cross channel strategy is really important. And then you layer that on with the full funnel and you're really covering all your bases here. All right. And this was some input that Matt had provided. Um, in a report that they had done with Forrester, um, we can see that brands do see the importance of a cross-channel strategy. So planning to prioritize, I highlighted in green the ones that refer to cross-channel. So the top one is to prioritize consumer expectations for seamless digital mobile experience. Uh, purchase journeys that combine channels, so focusing on that, focusing on purchase journeys that combine work and personal devices and a mix of devices. So again, this cross-channel experience is really important um, and it's also going to help you adapt as costs ebb and flow, um, but you're really catering to what that consumer uh, needs based on their particular place in their journey with your business. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Um, similarly, so this is, um, the question was, how has the importance of the following tactics changed for your organization? So yes, we do see search engines. That would be your search advertising. Of course, we see, you know, all these have more importance, but you can see that social media is at the top, um, OTT, and then display advertising. These are the top channels where, where businesses are saying these, you know, they're starting to see them as, as more important. All right, next slide. Um, so some other examples Matt gave of evidence of this cross-channel strategy really working well for businesses is, um, so one example is combining search ads with display ads. So in one study, there was a really strong correlation between the exposure frequency of audience ads, so this is um, display advertising, and the frequency of non-branded searches for younger travelers. So we talked earlier about how young travelers are really interested or the younger generation is really interested in travel. Non-branded searches just means that they are searching for travel terms, but that it doesn't include an actual brand name. So even if they don't know your brand, which you would run display ads to help generate brand awareness, but if you are running ads for um, your travel agency or for a particular um, travel destination or landmark or something of that nature, like a tourist attraction, you may not get, you may not have people searching for that exact name, but the audience ads can help generate interest. And then they would be searching for like, they may be inspired to be like, oh, I wonder if there's anything in Belgium that I might want to see. So this is one example. And then we have a few others. 
Um, so this is combining search with TV ads. So this is a, it's not as applicable to small businesses necessarily. This is a, there was an example of um, one major um, company, they ran a Super Bowl ad and there was a really a significant lift in results on the SERP when they ran these um, ads during the Super Bowl and that was within 10 minutes. Um, but in general, the connection, um, the other stat is that 46% of Microsoft automotive shoppers will search for information related to what they're watching on TV. So second screening just means they're watching one screen and they're also on their phone um, doing stuff on another. And that increase is 26% year, year over year. So again, people are doing multiple things at once in their journey. And the last example for cross-channel is um, a recent study, Matt shared that they had recently uh, partnered with Roku. And in a study on uh, retail and technology brands, there was a 70% lift in branded search volume and click likelihood just one to two weeks after launching the OTT campaign. And then naturally you're gonna see a decline, but there was still a 30% increase three to four weeks out. And it took a little over a month to return to baseline. So this is why these cross-channel strategies are really important. And the bottom um, illustration there is just to help you understand what the difference is between connected TVs and over the top. It's a, it's a kind of a confusing mess, but we do have a blog post on it that can help you understand it. All right. And we're going to skip this one just for the sake of time, but it was the same thing. Like when they're watching TV, they're more likely to, to do the research. Now, our third suggestion is to increase your budget. And this might feel a little counterintuitive because you're like, cost per lead is up. Like, why would I increase budget? But at the same time, you do need to stay competitive. So because paid search is so effective, it just gets more competitive every year. Like in 2019, we saw the, um, I think it was the 14% increase in CPL. And then this past year, we saw the 19%. Um, this is normal. This is what happens. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. So you do need to increase your budget if you want to pay to play and compete. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to increase your budget across all campaigns. There's plenty of ways you can reallocate. So look at your highest value keywords, see what's performing best and allocate more budget to those campaigns. Um, pause the ones that aren't generating a whole lot of value right now. You can certainly prioritize that way. Um, and in the same study that I was talking about before, we also see that brands are planning to increase their budget across these channels. Um, over the top, display, search, and social. OTT being the highest one, which is interesting because that is, tip, you know, that it's kind of up and coming, but it's kind of not. It's more of like a big brand strategy, but then it's actually becoming a lot more accessible for small businesses. All right, and nuance your personas. So I think I actually, was that the slide before that was number three and this is, so this is actually strategy number four, but that's okay. Um, I just did a typo. You can go um, back one more, Susie. Yeah, so I've alluded to this already, but it's good, you wanna have, uh, customer personas. So you've got your target audience and then within your target audience, you're going to have actual kind of fictional representations of your ideal buyers. So you can really connect with who they are and not just what they buy and what they do as a consumer. Um, and this includes demographics, device and channel preferences, behavior history. These are all important, but relying on just those alone is becoming outdated. We have a number of providers and platforms and technology uh, evolution now that allows us to really understand things on a much more granular level. And it's, a, it's going to be super important this year and moving forward to pay attention to these nuanced cues, like where they're working, um, how they're working, what kinds of tasks they're doing while they're 
shopping online or while they're watching TV and what mindset they're in. And the example is this report um, from Microsoft. So if you go to the next slide, Susie, 63% of consumers said they spend more time on their work PC than they did before the pandemic. 62% said they regularly research or purchase products and services during the during their work hours. And 51% the number said the number of online purchases they make during their work time has increased. Um, so this workday consumer example is just a great showing of how these personas are evolving that the pandemic is still shaping behavior, but it's really important to understand the lifestyles and the nuances that are going to impact your consumer and your target audience behavior. And so it's gonna be important, people are switching during the day between their desktop, they're, they're switching between doing work tasks and shopping online. So you may change up your ad schedule, like before when you didn't think to, to run ads during the day, you may wanna change that, you may test that out. Um, you may try an upper funnel campaign to capture some of that interest. If they're, if they're shopping, but like working at the same time, they may not be looking to get like a buyer's guide on which car to buy, but they may be looking for, th there may be some upper funnel offers going back to that full funnel, funnel strategy that will catch their eye that they would be willing to commit a few minutes to. So you can go to the next slide. Um, and this one, just the study shows that these these brands were asked to kind of rate their confidence level in some of these aspects of online advertising. And at the very bottom was this idea of developing the right tactics around customer personas and really um, nailing down those personas. So there's work to be done on this, according to brands, their own um, perspective on their maturity marketing wise. Um, and that's why it's important to use the platforms, use the partners and use the data available to you to really get these contextual cues. All right, and the last two suggestions are very specific to search. So these, these first three or four that I did, I forget because I messed up the numbers, but those are kind of related to having a very holistic, well-rounded strategy. Um, and now these are just kind of specific to search. So refine your keywords. Now this keyword management takes on a lot of forms, but specifically here, I'm talking about how we are seeing more ads on the SERPs that are not the most commercial intent SERPs. Um, so even for informational searches, navigational searches, whereas in the past, we typically only see ads appearing on commercial and transactional intent, we're seeing them kind of more broadly. And that comes from the removal of modified broad match. It comes from Google's change in the way it's running its ads and its platform. Um, so we also have been seeing a big push on Google's part for using broad match keywords. Our suggestion is to be cognizant of this. Um, phrase and exact match are still ideal for keeping the keeping results relevant and keeping your clicks relevant. Again, you don't wanna be paying for clicks that aren't converting. So it's gonna be really important to regularly review the search terms report, maintain your negative keyword lists. Um, and if you do use broad match, be conservative with your budget to start. Maybe you just wanna gather some data um, and then you can go from there. And the last one is to, that's why I messed it up. So uh, increased budget, we already talked about this. So we are good to go on that front. Um, Great. If you go, yeah, if you go to the next, is there anything else? Okay, it's the Q&A. Okay, yeah. yeah so, now we so before we go ahead and launch the Q&A, I do want to launch a quick poll for you all to check out. So. Kristen, this has been really amazing. I know that this, my head is spinning and I've been in the marketing game for a while, right? So this has been a ton of awesome information, super in depth for all the folks on the line today. If you feel like this was helpful, but you have a ton more questions or you have specific questions that are unique to your industry or your own um, specific situations, please feel free to hit yes in that poll to talk to an expert and figure out how 
we can help you just elevate the marketing that you're already probably doing or looking to build out, whatever the case may be. So we're going to leave this poll up for the remainder of the webinar and the Q&A portion is really going to be more of an auditory portion where you'll just go ahead and listen into our Q&A while we leave that poll up for the remainder of the webinar. And boy, oh boy, Kristen, there have been a ton of questions coming in and keep these questions coming, folks. This has been great so far. Um, so I'm going to kick us off here with the Q&A and I've been trying to kind of pin a few questions here and there. I, folks on the line, you know who I've kind of called out. Um, and I'm going to get ahead, go ahead and get us started here. Um, and Kristen, get ready because there's a ton of really quality questions I am, here. I am holding <laughs> on. Great, great. So a couple of folks here, and this was the same folks that I mentioned that um, called out some of the click-through rate numbers being interesting to them. And it's, it's kind of interesting because um, I know you focused a lot on like, you know, CPL, which is, of course, the money metric that everybody loves and, you know, a lot of those other key metrics, but a lot of folks on the line, um, I think it was James, Zach, a few other folks here, a lot of folks were calling out click through rate. They were all super surprised by the click through rate numbers. They were wondering why it might be trending downward. I know another folk on here, someone else on here also mentioned like possibly click through rate could be going down because People are being more intentional with their searches. They're maybe, you know, bouncing around, thinking on it before they actually make that click to eventually go to your page and convert. So I think a lot of folks on this line right now would love to hear your thoughts on why exactly click-through rate is so low right now. Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I wondered that myself because even though we didn't see a change in click-through rate year over year, no change is actually a big change from years past. Um, and when I go back to the year over year trends, I believe it has been trending upward until this year. Let me just double check downward. Sorry. No upward. So yes, we've been, we've typically been seeing an increase in click through rate each year. So there's a few different reasons that I can think of off the top of my head. The first thing I'm going to say is that it does all depend on your industry. Um, so if I look at the year over year, okay, so bear with me. I'm just going to look at the data for a second. Um, no, please. We love these in-depth answers. This is great. So, so here are a few scenarios. Um, seeing with responsive search ads, for example, this has impacted how ad copy appears. Um, so for the most part, I know responsive search ads can cause people to feel like they're not really in control of their ads and it can be a little bit tricky to master that copy. But at the same time, this could be leading to better ads appearing on the search engine results page um, because Google is picking and matching headlines and descriptions based on not just the search, but the searcher. Um, so this is this could be why we were seeing a an increase in click through rate each year. And then as for this year, it may be that, OK, ads are still effective, but that could still be playing to this behavior of people not like they're kind of like still maybe window shopping, but they're they're just they're more selective in what they even click on um, the other aspect of this is that in Google Marketing Live earlier, or not this year, last year, um, there was such a focus on making the shopping results super immersive and very visual. Um, so that is another big thing that's probably playing into it because now that the results are more detailed and um, they present more information, users can see whether or not they want the product before having to click on it. So those are like a few things off the top of my head. Um, and there may be more I can follow up on that, but I don't want to spend too much time. I'm sure there are other questions, but I hope that's helpful to start with. No, absolutely. I think that really kind of showcased the trends that you were seeing there. And that's, I think, exactly what folks were looking for. Um, yeah. I have another question kind of along the same lines from Matt here, and he asked, um, you know, with the decrease in conversion rate, but increase in CPL, this is kind of alluding to the same trend we were just talking about with click-through rate, right? Um, do we see users increasing their intentionality? So he's wondering if 
you know, these trends are alluding to the fact that users are converting less, but when they do convert, they're a higher quality conversion. Is that, you know, a takeaway you would you would get from those trends that you walk through or not necessarily? You know, that's a really interesting insight. And I would imagine that, yes, you probably are, you would think that you would get some maybe higher intent people. Um, I can't answer that as a whole it's gonna it would really depend like we'd have to ask advertisers what they're seeing in terms of the quality of their conversions and clicks um, but that's certainly a great point to make and i do think that yes people are being more intentional but at the same time keep in mind that there is also this desire there is still this pent up kind of like okay i just isolated in my house for a year or two years so like i'm gonna go out and do things anyway so it does it's gonna come down to industry especially because our mindsets are so different when we're shopping for travel and we're like yolo versus like when we're shopping for a car and we're like i'm you know now i'm a new person after this pandemic i'm gonna like save money and like you know it all kind of depends on the mindset there Right, absolutely. And I, I totally agree. I think it is at the end of the day, a lot of these questions, which are tough is, you know, there is no black and white answer, right? It is going to be unique for each advertiser out there. Um, but I absolutely agree with some of those, you know, assumptions that you can kind of make there. Um, a couple of other great questions coming in here. Um, Jennifer asked, is there, you know, let's say, for example, we're looking at all these trends. Um, you know, is there, does this give any insights into how you might position your search ads going forward? For example, should you focus more on, you know, the perks of the product or service that you're offering, more on the value? Um, it's kind of tough. And I know you do a lot of work around and on the WordStream blog around, you know, ad copy and positioning and things like that. So I think folks just want to hear your thoughts on that. Is there you know, maybe one sort of angle folks should take, you know, in 2023 with their ad copy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I should have emphasized this even more during the webinar, but definitely incorporating a lot of like cost savings language into your ad copy. Um, again, catering to that desire, like, you know, catering to this desire to do things and, and live life and not let like the economy get you down too much. Um, and it's going to depend on, you know, your, your target audience, but catering to that desire to spend, but to spend wisely, um, to treat yourself, but to save. Um, and I also think that in, instead of, you know, trying to figure out what the best language is, again, I will say that for responsive search ads in particular, because that's our only option for a standard search campaign, it will be best to do a mix of when you're compiling your different headlines and descriptions, it's always going to be best to try out a mix of different approaches and then let Google's mach machine learning kind of gather that data over time. Um, and for the most part, you can test, you can do some testing within a responsive search ad because it has so many combinations. But ideally, if you want to try out like a different approach, so if you want to have an ad that's kind of themed around like you deserve a vacation, but you also deserve to like not have to work overtime or something like that versus another more standard language you've used, you would definitely want to separate those out into two different campaigns or two different or ad groups. I'm confusing myself here, but the idea is responsive search ads aren't going to take care of all the testing for you. So you should still be doing some A-B testing with different variants for how you want to frame your, um, your language. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with that. I think at the end of the day, another example of like a not super black and white, you know, question and answer situation in this type of space is it's A and B testing is always going to be the name of the game at the end of the day, because yeah. you might find that, you know, a certain headline works for your business that would be totally different for another business. Right. So I think yeah. that was some really great advice. Um, so I think we only have time for maybe one more question here. Oh my gosh, there's so many and I wish I could, we could answer all of them. As you can probably tell, um, Kristen and I
you know, hit the be the heavy hitter that folks should really focus in on and strategize around? Great question. Um, loaded answer, but I'll sum it up in two minutes. Um, it, it really does depend. It depends on your industry. It depends on what you're promoting. It depends on what your goals are. But you're going to hear a lot of people say like, OK, whatever, like, doesn't matter what your cost per click or click through rate are, what it comes down to is your conversion rate, like your conversion rate and your cost per lead. And I am inclined to agree with that, that conversion rate and cost per lead are like kind of ultimately like your most important. But this is a great kind of full circle back to the beginning when I was um, having you navigate the interactive charts. It, all of these metrics play off of one another. So if you are looking to lower your cost per lead, okay, you need to either increase your lead volume or decrease your cost per click. Well, cost per click also comes down to how many clicks you're getting based on your spend. And that comes down to click through rate. So really, if you are, if you're trying to figure out which metric to focus on, it's more about focus on optimizing your ads to be the highest quality and the most relevant and go from there. And if you see opportunities for improvement, then you, you can pinpoint that you may be able to see, especially using these benchmarks, okay, my click-through rate isn't it's really not that great compared to what others are seeing in my industry. Okay, start there. Or, you know, maybe you're seeing better results. So it's, it's gonna depend on, on what you're looking at. Um, but yeah, the benchmarks will help you to figure out which metrics to focus on. But at the end of the day, it does come down to cost per lead. Um, but what is a lead? A, a, a lead or a conversion action varies depending on what campaign you're running. For some, it's it's a call. For others, it's a um, it's a full blown purchase. So. It all depends. The metrics play off of one another. There really isn't one specific, but if you focus holistically on just making high quality ads, that's really going to get you off on the right foot. Yeah, absolutely. Great sum up. And I think I really the main takeaway here is, you know, collect as much data you can as you can about your own situation. Look at what's out there within, you know, industry related um, sources and resources and things like that to really figure out your unique situations here. But thank yes. you all so much for joining. This was amazing, Kristen. We can't thank you enough for all of these amazing insights. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Keep your eyes peeled for future webinars. We do them monthly. Um, and thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.